Hi, I'm David Butler. I'm Emily Freeman. And happy Easter, everybody. Here we are on day number seven of our week-long Easter celebration. We're so glad that you've been with us all week and that you're here with us again today. We wanted to try something a little bit different today and just come out in nature because it is the place that testifies of Jesus Christ and of his goodness, and it reminds us of all the new that is ahead. All week long, we have been watching different witnesses from that first Easter week bear their testimonies and learn their lessons about Jesus Christ and his resurrection. And today on day seven, we wanted to have a chance to bear our witness of Jesus Christ. We're hoping you will take that same opportunity before day's end to think about what does Jesus Christ mean to you? I had an interesting opportunity this week. I have a good friend who is fighting cancer for her fourth time. She was in surgery on Friday for 12 and a half hours. And when she got home and was rested in her bed, she texted me and said, come over and let's talk about Jesus. So I went over to her house and I climbed up on her bed and I sat next to her and she said, I've missed all the videos. I've missed everything you've been doing. What do you wanna teach me about Jesus? And I thought back over all of these eyewitnesses, over everybody that we've been talking about. And I said, I could tell you about everyone we've learned about, or I could tell you about something new that I've just been thinking about this week. And she said, yes, tell me that. And I said to her, you know how much I love the message of Jesus Christ, that he meets people where they are. And we talked about the stories that we love in the scriptures, the woman at the well, and he met her at her well. And Peter, he met him in the water. And he met Lazarus at his tomb. And he met the daughter of Jairus in her bedroom. And we went through each of these people. And I said to her, I found a new one. And I think it is my favorite of all of the people. And it's better than anyone else. And she said, how could it be better? And I said, just listen, remember the criminal? He met him on the cross. And we just sat there for a minute and thought about that. And the message of that, that even up until the very last moments of his life, he was meeting people where they were. It didn't matter what was happening in his life. It mattered what was happening in theirs. And as we think about him on the cross, we remember that that is a place where he descended below all of us. We combine Gethsemane, we think about the cross. And as we talked about that, Chris said to me, remember when you talk about it, that he didn't just meet us where we are to lift us. He descended below all of us to lift us. And I thought about the scripture that we read in Docker and Covenants, and it's section 122 in verse eight. And it says, the son of man hath descended below them all. And then in verse nine, therefore hold on thy way. Thy days are known and God will be with you forever and ever. And that is my testimony this Easter, that the Lord knows where we are. He knows what is going on in our story. He knows everything that is happening in our life and he will meet us where we are. And he comes to lift us and to carry us and to heal us and to love us. Whatever we need, wherever we are in our story, he will meet us there. Of that, I am certain. I can't help but think about every Easter when it comes around a trip I took to Jerusalem a couple of years ago. And uh, I had a tour guide that was taking me around. And there's actually a couple of locations where historians and just the general public go back and forth on, is this his tomb? Is this the location? There's two major places. And the man was kind of giving me all the pros and cons of all of those spots, archeologically and geographically and historically. And, and then at the very end, he said something to me before I walked into the garden tomb. And he said, but David, Mr. David, he called me, the most important thing is both of the tombs are empty. And I knew that before I went there to the garden tomb. But it was an interesting experience for me to walk in and stand in there alone and then turn around and see on the sign, on the doorpost, the words of the angels, he is not here, he is risen. And I walked out and could just imagine in my mind, Mary sitting at the tomb, weeping 
And I love that it's a woman in a garden. Hmm. The whole story of our, of our mortality started with a woman in a garden. All of our problems and issues and death and sin all started there. And it ends and concludes with that woman in a garden. And I love, as you were saying, he meets her there, mm -hmm. almost like she represents all of humanity weeping at the tomb. They'd buried Jesus and thought all hope was lost. And she got there and saw the tomb empty and, and, and ran to Peter and John and Thomas and said, I have bad news. Mm -hmm. What was bad was getting worse. Mm -hmm. And she comes back and he meets her there in her sorrow and, and weeping and just calls her name. And with that same tender voice that he always did, and right then she knew everything was gonna be okay. And now he switches the whole story. She'd run around yelling bad news, and now she had good news mm. that he was risen. And death had been so permanent. And now that it had been conquered, that means nothing wrong or hard about life has to be permanent. Sin, tragedy, rebellion, none of those things have to last forever. They don't have to be our story. Because of Easter, he can breathe into us a new story. And that is my witness. Everyone has second chances. And hope came with the Easter morning sun. And, and he is risen and still here among us, working and moving in our lives. That I am sure of. And now we would like to leave you all with an invitation for this Easter Sunday. Last year on Easter, I started a new tradition of writing a letter to all of my kids about my Easter witness. And maybe that is something that you'd like to do today. Take some time to either write down or share those things about Jesus Christ and the resurrection, those things that you are certain of. We've loved being with you this week and we don't know how you are gonna spend this day, but we hope for you it is a day of rejoicing, a day that turns your heart to Jesus Christ and that you have time to look back and see where have you seen his hand in your life and taking just a few minutes to reflect on that. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter.